Foot Clan, it is Monday. That means it is studs and duds time. Let's celebrate some of these big performances. Let's talk about those duds. How are we reacting? How are we moving on from some of these players? Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Like the video. Leave us a comment about the stud that took you to a victory. Enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 19th, the Fantasy Footballers back with you. Jason Moore, Mike Wright. I'm Andy Holloway. It's going to be a fun show today because it was a fun weekend. It was. Incredible comebacks, wild fantasy performances, and... Um, I can't wait to talk about it all. It, it, was it was absolutely exhilarating. It was crazy. The games that were done, and you're just like, okay, well, this team smoked that team. <laughs> it's like, wait. Nope. Nope, they lost. <laughs> you know it's a great weekend when Joe Flacco is at the pinnacle of the storylines, right? Hope you started him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 102 pass attempts for Joe Flacco in the first two weeks of the season. That is number one. At the quarterback position by like oh it is thirteen <laughs> fourteen attempts. Oh, I mean, man. incredible, incredible games. Terrible coaching at times. Oh my gosh, some bad coaching. It, it's it's just uh, it becomes stressful. I think for these fan bases when they see these mistakes being made. But um, we have a lot to talk about. Since it's Monday, we always react to the weekend with your puns <laughs> as we get sophisticated let's react mm. Mm. i will begin with to infinity and beyond oh my goodness he was so good how about la marvelous jackson i enjoyed it very much and uh amon rossum <laughs> he's uh, so good cole could get off my team cole <laughs> cole cut me oh man and because we never get a chance to do this how oh, about uh put him in a body bag Jonathan Failure. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, oh, man. What a loser that guy is. <laughs> How about Vile Pitts? Oh, boy. And uh, Jalen Goddle. <laughs> he did go Goddle. Or um, my favorite, Mike. Dalton Sharts. Oh, man. <laughs> Good shark. Didn't he joke. get hurt? Travis Metian. And Jude. Pat. Fire Muth. Oh, and Elisha. <laughs> Snore. <laughs> Fair. Very nice sound effect. Those are pretty good. Thank Not you, bad. Foot Clan, for the uh, Monday Pun Day entries. What? There were lots of them. And again, 92% were the negative. But because the pain is still being felt. Uh, absolutely. But that, that did improve over week one, I believe. There Which was, was 99%. Like, we, yeah. we had players who are supposed to perform did this week. So that was great. And also, I mean, getting to, you know, getting to humble jonathan taylor every once in a while he he needs that yeah yeah it was uh you know we said it during the week this was going to be the week of market yep. market mm -hmm. correction mm -hmm. which took place now there are some situations in which there wasn't a market correction and that is what dominated the thousand plus monday punday entries i think 500 of the thousand were cole Komet related Gee. Who yeah. is still waiting for his first reception? So the uh, that number, so, the the Joe Flacco passing attempts. Yes. What, what was it? Hundred and two. Okay, and Justin, Justin Fields. Justin Fields has also played two full games in the same NFL. amount of quarters and everything. What? Uh, how many times has he thrown the ball? Twenty eight. What? Eleven last night. In 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 week one, they were way they, up in that game though, right? No. <laughs> in could he used a nice. Come back. In week one, we threw that game out because yeah. it was the water bowl. It was it played in a monsoon. He only threw the ball 17 times. He's not going to throw the ball 17 times 
you know, again, and we were right. Yeah, we were. Because he will Nailed never it. throw the ball 17 <laughs> times again. They're down all game, and he throws the ball 11 times? That is that's almost unthinkable. And it, it when you have a disparity that vast between the Jets who are throwing the ball 102 times in two games, 50 a game, and the Bears who have thrown the ball an average of what? 14. 14 a game. That disparity Oof. usurps all draft capital you ever invested on a player like Darnell Mooney. Yeah. You know, you should be you literally should be playing Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, and Corey Davis ahead of Darnell Mooney right now. That is my opinion. Yeah, you cannot start uh, pass catchers. Even if you say, well, uh, you know, equi uh, equinemius. equinemius. Thank you, Equinemius. You're welcome. <laughs> um, lo looks like the number one target over Mooney. It's irrelevant. You don't have enough passing volume. You don't have enough plays. I mean, the thing is, you you say, well, how did he only throw the ball 11 times? When, when a lot of your drives are three plays long, then you don't get opportunities to throw the ball. And this, um, this offense is going to have a lot of three and outs. Jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. You get a bonus weekly episode of the show, a ton of premium perks. All of the the stream finder tool, the consistency snapshot uh, tool, a bunch of the Foot Clan resources, they really come alive after a couple weeks of information, right? We are, you know, you can't take one week of defensive performances and project the entire year. You need some data. We've been collecting that data, and those, those tools are going live uh, with very valuable information. I mean, we're going to get into the news momentarily. Adjustments are going to be needed to be made by fantasy players. Cole yeah. Komet saw 9% target uh, share. Uh, yeah, 9% gonna... target share? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, those... one, because he had what? a target. <laughs> <laughs> what What are you doing, Chicago? Are you, like... You know who they need. Uh, they're trusting the process. They need Nagy back into that. Oh, no, into no, that no, 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 no. Let's, let's give them a moment. All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, let's go ahead and let Mike Wright give us the first bit of news today. So, uh, friends, 49ers quarterback Trey Lance suffered a season-ending ankle injury. He will undergo surgery today. He's on the IR. The season is done before it even began. Jimmy Garoppolo will be the starter. This is, uh, I mean, like for the 49ers will be fine for Trey Lance. Like this is, this is the worst case scenario possible for the young man's career. Cause Jimmy Garoppolo with this roster, this can be a very good team. This can be a playoff team. This, this can, can be, be a Super Bowl. This team. can be a Super Bowl contending roster. I mean, we know it because they were almost there last year, and now the team still doesn't know if Trey Lance is the guy. And if Jimmy Garoppolo rattles off another great year, I mean, I don't know. Can how I you... add one more thing? Sure, to that? I, sure. Go ahead. Because you need more added to it. You also have a severe ankle injury for a player sure, whose fantasy yes, yes. value and NFL value is predicated on being not kind of like Dak Prescott can get mobile and, yep. and gain 200, 300 yards, but is the Lamar Jackson type of player, the Jalen Hurts type of player in which you're looking at 600 to 900 yards rushing. And and I think we're still waiting for more information on the specifics of the injury. I think over the next couple of days we'll we'll hear more about that. But I mean, Dak Prescott this had sucks, as, as what what is assumed to be a similar injury multiple years ago, and multiple weeks ago he said he couldn't wear certain cleats because it started aggravating his ankle and he had to mispractice that you know wow i didn't know that and, yeah and there change was like the, cleats. the so shoelaces were too tight it was, this it was is, weird i mean this is just tragic news for yeah. the man it's really sad for all of the people that believed in trey lance wanted to see what he could do fantasy wise fantasy wise for the rest of the roster i think it's probably good you don't have touchdown vulturing around the goal line for the running backs i know yeah, jimmy garoppolo well, got one. not only did jimmy garoppolo got it so did kyle use check we love juice but juice my man that was i needed that touchdown from my Jeff. name is juice so, You're killing me. And, and and the receiving, you know, you would say, well, who would throw for more total 
you know, passing yards on the season, we would presume that Garoppolo yes. would throw for more passing yards than Trey Lance, which means the wide receivers' values like Brandon Ayuk goes up. And it also stabilizes your expectation of use for Debo Samuel, who was great with Jimmy Garoppolo. If George Kittle ever plays football again, we may um, have more optimism there as well. But, yeah, for the man, Trey Lance, get well, get better. There's... I mean, He's a young man, and he can come back from this. It's just going to be a challenge. It, it's like the off season. You know, this will be now. We'll have a third off season of. Is it going to be Jimmy Garoppolo? Is it going to be Trey Lance? I mean, this is is this is not fun, and it sucks for everyone involved. If they had not, if they had found a suitor for Jimmy Garoppolo, mm. the you know, Debo Samuel and in the backfield uh, and everybody, it would be over. Season before. would be toast. So um, They'd be trading back for Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy G will earn $250,000 extra per game that he plays 25% plus of the snaps. So, oh, he's making all of his and money. And if they win that game, it's 350 k So he could he could earn five, six million more dollars. Yep. It's going to work out for the 49ers in that way. Dalton Schultz, undergoing an MRI today for a knee injury. Concern about a possible PCL sprain or a bone bruise. Believed to have avoided an ACL injury, but it is very likely a multi-week absence, according to our very own Matthew Betts. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, you have to plan to be without uh, Dalton Schultz for, for the next few weeks. Which, I think, as a general topic, tight end. Oh, my gosh. We're back in the, yeah. we're back in the, the sewage. It's like... Every single year. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Week three comes around. It is. And Cole, you're like, man, tight ends suck. Cole Komet managers wishing they had Trey Burton from the Bears. <laughs> I mean, David Njoku hasn't done anything spectacular. Dalton Schultz is hurt. Kyle Pitts is sending panic in the streets. Oh, man. Kyle that, Pitts is a very interesting topic. That is the good news about all these guys stinking is that. That they all do. That yeah. they all do. I mean, if you got Gerald Just, Everett, <laughs> great. Otherwise, it's like you're, you and. Tyler your, Higby, Mike, start of the week. You were happy. Yeah, yeah baby. Go. You yeah, came I, I, I started him. Thank you, Mike. You're yeah, welcome. seven for 71, I think. The second highest yardage of the week behind Mark Andrews. So, um, but yes, you're, what you're saying is at least bad, washed out bad, most likely, in yeah. your matchup. Level playing field. Jerry Judy, right shoulder injury. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett, more of a rib issue is what he's saying than a shoulder issue. That's good news because okay. I was worried about uh, collarbone immediately when right. he hit the ground. Um, if you watch that football game, First of all, Broncos fans, that was gross. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett and company Man. really struggling out of the gate here. Really struggling. Uh, decision making. I mean, they had they had a play where they had a field goal lined up, and instead of taking the timeout, they just got a delay of game and had yep. to punt. And it this, was embarrassing. And it was a crucial field goal. Was, yes. I don't. Was it going to tie the game? I don't recall the. I think at that point in time, it would have tied the game. Like it was. It was in. Like, unacceptable mistake from the coaches. And then Cortland Sutton, you know, you look at the situation with Judy's injury, it was it was nobody else. Like, it was Cortland Sutton. You already don't have Tim Patrick. Now you don't have Jerry Judy. The tight end position is nothing spectacular, right? Like, Albert Aguabanon isn't even a, getting work. I think he was a goose. And, the, and then Dan Beck is getting handoffs. I mean... <laughs> well, uh, K.J. Hamler was out for this game, and it, not a re-aggravation, but the, at least what the coaches were saying, that this is just... This is part of the plan for Hamler that we want him around for the entire season, so we don't want to overwork him coming back from his devastating injury. I with if Judy's going to miss time, I mean Hamler certainly will be back in the lineup, and he'll be the wide receiver too. So I mean on the waivers, he'll be an interesting pickup. Well, and Kendall Hinton was an every down wide receiver after the injuries. But uh, all that all all of what was just said is Cortland Sutton is going to be very good. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and Russ has struggled. Yeah. Yes, he has. That needs so, to be discussed. It's not all Hackett. It Russ has looked bad. Yeah, it's a kind of a mess. Uh, you you might get more pass catching work out of the running backs too. Keep that in mind. James Conner exited early with a left ankle injury. You saw basically split work between Daryl Williams and Eno Benjamin. In my opinion, watching that football game, Daryl Daryl Williams was more impressive. Uh, he just brought a little bit more oomph to that running game. He can catch the football, but we don't know how bad this injury is for James Conner. Right. 
we'll have to evaluate that this week for the waiver show. Yeah, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I, I agree with you. Daryl Williams is the better back to have in the event of a James Conner injury. I think Eno's going to continue playing the Eno role. It's wild. So, so Hunter Renfro concussion. Oh, man. It, being well, evaluated. That, it was on, on the fumble. fumble. Yes, it was. He when, got smooshed on that play. <laughs> he did. Isaiah Simmons yeah. smooshed him, as Mike said. Uh, two Never fumble, want to get smooshed. Two no, fumbles no, on consecutive no. plays. I, I mean, if that hit was – I would have just exploded into like six different pieces if yeah. that was me. I'm going to get smooched. He, oh, no, yeah, no, I'll smooched. take a smooch, yeah. The smooch did uh, did some work this week. Yeah, he did. <laughs> we all hold our breath and wait. I'm so for afraid. The, there, is, there has to be some time limit, there right? There is, yes. Yeah. Statute of limitations yes. on the smooch. And Hit the next piece of news. Uh Time's NFL over. Network's Ian Rampaport reports that the NFL is reviewing Mike Evans' actions on Sunday as part of a potential suspension. Um, he was ejected after getting into a fight. Mike said that he thought Evans would likely get a one game yes. because of history. Definitely possible. I it, didn't think the individual actions were it, worthy of it, but you're right. Uh, a history matters. The, the thing is, this isn't the first time that Mike Evans has like run <laughs> run onto a field and pushed a man who was not expected to get pushed because the play was done uh he was he was booted out Marshawn Lattimore out I mean still accurate Marshawn Lattimore just he owns Mike Evans it, the numbers are absolutely ridiculous he's in his head man uh and I mean shout, Evans knows he can get thrown out of those yes. games because it doesn't even make a difference and shout out uh to Tom Brady for getting that whole thing started Got his got his wide receiver kicked out for having to protect him. Brady Good work, was Brady. Brady was like on another level of upset in that game with them being down, you know, three to nothing, three to three, couldn't do anything on offense. Julio didn't play. That was news we got that he was going to be yeah. out, and nobody else stepped up really than Mike Evans. Gabe Davis still listed as questionable for tonight's game. We have two Monday Night Football games. So uh, we also have Kyle Phillips who had nine targets last week, wide receiver for the Titans. Also still listed as questionable. So the, it'll be interesting to see what happens tonight. If Phillips is out, you know, it's going to be a, an opportunity on primetime for Traylon Burks. Yes, it is. To do something. Uh, Buffalo, I believe, this game's in Tennessee. Is that right? It's in Buffalo. It's Mi in Buffalo. Minus How? 10. Minus 10. I knew that they were – I'm I'm going Tennessee on that one. Not to win the ball game. To but, cover. But to cover. I think Monday night, I don't know. I'm Mike Vrabel will – Get his team figured did you, out. Did you watch uh, Buffalo play last week? Yeah, I watched. They're them. Uh, they're pretty good. I Are you questioning the two and zero oh, almost upset of the of the week guy? Uh, Is that no. what you're doing? Hey, no, uh, I'm I'm you only celebrating. Get one a week. I am <laughs> celebrating. That's fair. I very much need Derrick Henry to do work. So I I can't imagine that they can keep within ten points if Derrick Henry uh, does not have a. Yeah, good you're game. right about that. All right, that was today's news and notes. Presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, this is fun. There were oh, some... Oh, baby. I mean, there weren't just some, like, lowercase studs this week. Mm. These were all caps, underlined, studs, bold studs. Yeah. Uh, second place goes to Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I mean, 21 for 29. He ended up with, Mike, how many fantasy points did he score for you in your league? In in our league of record, he was over 50. Wow. The, I don't remember the exact total. And Nine for 119 like, on the ground, four total touchdowns. Yeah, so he had basically uh, an 80-yard, so a 75-yard receiving touchdown to Bateman. And, the, and, like, this game was so wild and wacky. The game starts with a, a Duvernay kickoff return for a touchdown, and I've got Lamar Jackson, and you go, you freaking kidding me? That is the absolute worst-case scenario. As a fantasy player, that's what you dread. Ta you delete a possession, <laughs> yes. and you put them into a lower passing odds situation. Then uh, the Baltimore Ravens get stopped, I believe, four consecutive times on the goal line, which ends with a Lamar Jackson fumble, and you go, okay. Well, okay. Here Mike's we go. ready for the beating. Again. Here we go again, but then it gets turned on, you know, with three passing touchdowns. He'd already had a massive fantasy output, 
And then the 80-yard rushing touchdown was just took him over the top. It was very, very, very fun if to have Lamar on your team yesterday. If your running back gets 119 yards and yep. a touchdown, you are thrilled. Yes. If your quarterback <laughs> throws for 303, you are thrilled. He did both of them. It is. It's pretty funny behind the curtain here. Uh, Mike and I were the two in the studio yesterday watching games together, and I am very, very vocal. Uh, I get up and I run around. Mike is more like watching the games in the library sometimes. Yeah. So when his players finally do something, <laughs> you get this like he can't contain it. He'll be, you know, Lamar is like ninety five percent of the way to the end zone before I even hear that this play is taking place, and he's about to go in, and Mike finally goes, "Run, Lamar!" <laughs> you know, well, he, he almost he almost got <laughs> caught. Like you had the defender. I think it was Howard. I don't recall. Yeah, it was close. And and did the had the full swipe at the feet, which usually. Makes you gets that where your legs click together and you fall down and he would have fallen down on the two and it would have been just brutal to lose that many points but he he got in and Go if you, if you wonder whether Tyreek Hill helps uh, quarterbacks Tua Tungavailoa thirty six for fifty four sixty nine and six unbelievable game. outscored the Ravens twenty eight to three in the fourth quarter had four touchdown passes in the fourth quarter it was unbelievable to watch yes. Uh, it was one of those games where the only way they come back is if you're – it's like you're playing flag football and you go, the only way we get back in this game is two deep bombs. Mm -hmm. and, but it's the NFL, and it still works because Tyreek Hill is the dominant force and Jalen Waddle is not far behind. And when you have two of them, it's just – it makes two a very interesting. You're, you're looking at the Trey Lance manager, right? Yep. And you're saying, you know, do you make a pivot to Tua – as your number one option, and and do you even look at him if you're Russ, if you're the Russ manager? You drafted Russ to be – Sure. You didn't draft Russ to kind of meander his way to a couple of touchdowns. You drafted him on the promise or hope of four or five touchdown games in a prolific offense that now has one pass catcher. Yeah, I mean, obviously Tua is not going to do this uh, on a regular basis. Uh, 469 yards and six touchdowns is outlandish, but that What about 303, shows, though? That shows a – ceiling that seemed Impossible. unreachable yeah. and so now knowing that that it is possible with these weapons and with this coaching staff a he lot of this Buffalo came next week in the second <laughs> sure that that is very unfortunate <laughs> um but the, it's not like the ravens are a bad defense it's almost it's almost I don't good know, man they I, might be i i was gonna say i think we have good news for fantasy football that the baltimore sec the, the ravens secondary is still bad yeah i mean it, it's, they, what, it's the possible. jets last week put up a lot of yardage against them? The nice thing is that he played against an offense that was really, really good. And so, you know, the beginning of this game, this was a blowout. It seemed like the the Ravens were going to uh, massacre the mm -hmm. Dolphins. And so it, it took halftime adjustments and changes and then boom, bam. It uh, took Tyree Kill running faster than humans can run. Tyree Kill, I don't know how many plays he actually missed because we got the, the sleeper alert that he had to step off for cramping. Which, uh, then he was back and even faster. It w what was crazy is I have him in my DraftKings lineup when we had our, our matchup this week. And Waddle's going off, and I'm going, well, Tyreek's, and now Tyreek's hurt. I'm like, oh, my gosh. This is, I, I was counting on a big, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, but they do have Buffalo next week. He will be, I mean, people are going to chase this on the waiver wire. So if you aren't excited about starting Tua, who had one touchdown in week one, Against Buffalo, this could be a situation where you just save some of your fab and go for a better option if what, you're looking to stream the quarterback say position. Wait for him to hit the wire after he plays after Buffalo. Buffalo. Carson Wentz, uh, <laughs> it was a bad start. It was a great finish, 30 for 46, 337 and 3. He's going to be another player. He did it again, well, man. He, here's my opinion on Carson Wentz. Okay. I don't think that their defense is, is what we saw two years ago, despite everything that Ron Rivera would want it to be. Correct. And you have incredible weapons now. Yes, yes you It's do. not Terry McLaurin all alone. It's Terry McLaurin. Jahan Dotson scored again. Curtis Samuel, and I'll stand corrected on not thinking he was going to be able to repeat week one. Curtis Samuel looks great even down the field. When you have three weapons like that, and you're going to be down a lot. Carson Wentz can garbage time some, some serious points. Yeah, he's leading the league in passing touchdowns, so... That's oh my goodness! Cool. Just it was 
How do you feel about the Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, who's going to retire first bet now? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling great about it now because Matt Ryan sucked. The Lions were pulverizing the Manders. I mean, I think it was 20-something to zero. Yeah, it's 22 to nothing. And then, it, and then Wentz was able to come back. So, Well, whenever Carson Wentz, Joe Flacco, and Jared Goff are in your studs, you know it was a fun week in yeah. fantasy football. Flacco was uh, 307 and 4. No interceptions, 102 pass attempts, like I said. Cincinnati, who looks extremely beatable. I mean, Joe Flacco would be added to the list of, uh, what is it, Cooper Rush and Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky has teams that Cincinnati has now lost to. Woof. So Jared Go uh, Joe Flacco is setting up for that. And then Goff, again, doing what he's done over the past few years. The Lions defense, not good enough. I mean, those Carson Wentz, Joe Flacco, Jared Goff. All three of those defenses, massive struggles down, and then the second half is great. Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray. <laughs> wow. <laughs> From the the pit of despair, man. He, he was, was nothing. so bad in the first half. The offense looks putrid without DeAndre Hopkins. They can do nothing, but necessity is the mother of all invention, and being down 20 to nothing and having to, you know – just make plays happen. I I really couldn't believe. You know, we've we've uh, in the the roster that Mike and I share, we have Kyler as a starter, and it was just putrid the whole way through. Yep. And then he finished with a fine fantasy day. Yeah, yeah. I definitely tweeted about how gross the offense looked, and um, they managed to change it up in the second half. Quick break. Back with the running backs. All right, Nick Chubb, really good at football. Three rushing touchdowns, 17 for 87. In their blowout victory against the Jets. <laughs> yeah, the uh, I don't know if you saw this, Jason. The announcers had put up graphics already about the last time that the Browns finished uh, started the season 2-0. and Oh, man. It wasn't 2022. That's... Oh, boy. And, yeah. And did you see the little blurb? It's... Yeah, I mean it's it's ridiculous hindsight analysis, but it is is very true. Like Nick Chubb had his final touchdown, if he had just gone down, yep, the game's over. The game would have been over yep. because it was under two minutes. The Jets could do nothing about it. If he took a knee on the one but, instead but of going in, the touchdown put him up an insurmountable lead. Except uh, it was very surmountable. <laughs> If you did not watch <laughs> games this weekend, the Jets yeah. won. Yes. The uh, the Corey Davis touchdown was the most inexplicable defensive breakdown I think I've seen in the whole week. Corey Davis was running down the sideline with nobody around him at all, as though the Browns players were already talking about how they had won or they had something. To, they had to cover Garrett Wilson. Yeah. Wow. Impossible. We'll get we'll get into yeah. that. Aaron Jones. Woo, baby. Fifteen for one thirty two and one on the ground. Three for thirty eight and one through the air. Absolute monster performance by Aaron Jones on the week. Do you trade high? I don't. No? no? No, because I think this is the recipe for success. I mean, Aaron Jones has always been a player that ping-pongs between weak winning performances and why didn't they use him more? But he is, with my eyeballs, a top five runner in, in football. So I think they know that this is the recipe to win football games. He he is absolutely a top-tier running back. Do you trade high, Jay? I mean, uh, you it, asked the question. It, it, yeah, I mean, I think if I can capitalize and, and high is where, actually – I'm not looking go, to trade bro? him. Um, you know, like a Dalvin Cook. If I can turn him into a Dalvin Cook, I would rather – like I still do worry about – A.J. Dillon's utilization has been – you know, A.J. Dillon is going to eat into some of Aaron Jones' work. We were worried after week one. And obviously he's great. I mean, we all love Aaron Jones here. He's he's a phenomenal player, and he'll have his big weeks. And I agree with Andy. Like he's kind of done this for most of his career. He's he's got big blow up week winning performances, and then he doesn't always have the volume. But if I could turn one of these great week winning performances against the Bears into you know a, an upgrade at the position, then I would I would try to do that. I just. I I bought low last week. I was right. not worried about Aaron Jones. I went out and I traded Dalvin Cook, and I got. Aaron Jones and Hollywood and a second round draft pick for Dalvin Cook because I was trying to capture this performance and you're saying go get Dalvin Cook back. 
just straight, but straight just up, straight now. up. Now. And then you tricky. Have- <laughs> the, the the hard part of moving from Aaron Jones is I don't. There's not a ton of players above him. I'm I'm okay having Dalvin Cook there, but it's like Nick Chubb. Chubb had three rushing touchdowns this week. Last week, Kareem Hunt was the one that had the touchdowns. So there's going to be weeks where Aaron Jones puts up numbers like this, like 15 for 100 yards. But A.J. Dillon is the one who ends up with two touchdowns. It's, well, it's just going to happen throughout the week. They, I the enjoyed season. them both on the field at the same time. They they have a lot of plays where Jones lines up in the slot and comes back, and then they're both standing next to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, I you know, if you wanted to try to capitalize, Saquon Barkley would be a different name of like, he had a down week, 10 fantasy points ish and half PPR scoring, but his utilization was outstanding. Still, you know, like an 80% snap player. I would rather have Barkley than Aaron Jones. Okay. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. What about Austin Eckler? Yeah, I would rather have Eckler. Okay. I oh man. The Eckler nervousness is real. I think I'd oh, I think I'd go Jones. Ooh. Tony Pollard. Mike, do you need to speak for a moment about what you watched in <sighs> Dallas? Uh, I mean, there Tony Pollard had himself well, running backs across the board were very low scoring this week. Tony Pollard makes it in with, you know, under a hundred yards and one touchdown. Uh, you know, hundred yards from scrimmage. The the concern, though, for Zeke is is now very real. Not that Zeke is still the on the field way more than Tony Pollard, but you have these stretches where they're just they're going with Tony Pollard, and they had the goal line. They had a goal line play where I, and if I remember it correctly, Pollard had just had a a, a great chunk play, and it's like, oh, he's gonna be tired. You're gonna go to the hammer, Zeke at the goal line, and they did not. So that is extremely concerning moving forward that Zeke doesn't have a Zeke, monopoly on the goal line carry. He has not been inside the top 40 in either of the first two weeks. Yeah, and the yeah. The, the running back usage is still his. Like he, you know, if you look at just the 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 carries and the snaps and things like that and routes run but, too. But the passing work as far as targets and yep. receptions, those are going Pollard's way. The way that they're utilizing him and, and honestly his talent in the receiving game is is better. So, you know, we talk about targets being an earned statistic and Cooper Rush with no Dalton Schultz I mean, going forward Tony Pollard look like looks like someone with the passing work you could start in your flex no problem <laughs> I, had, I had to vet the stat uh Ezekiel Elliott has finished both weeks with negative receiving yards he was negative three in week one and negative four in week two so yes. we have more receiving That's yards not great. yes we do and there's not a lot of optimism for like what makes Zeke valuable would be Dak bringing them down the field to put up 30-plus points and giving him goal line opportunities, Pollard's the one that can break the 48-yard run. You Correct. Know, it, it is very – I don't know what you can do with Zeke now. I don't know if he's he's somebody that people are still going to trade for the name. But right know, now yeah. I'm pretty worried, and I'm somebody that has him in a couple leagues. And, you know, I, I said on the show last week how worried I was, and now it's been validated. Yeah, he's still going to have his weeks, but – when you're making that start sit decision, it's going to be very difficult to get him in. They play Monday Night Football next week against the Giants. If he collapses on Monday Night Football against the Giants, that will be troubling. Yep. DeAndre Swift only had uh, what ten opportunities in this game, and yet ended up a valuable fantasy asset, scoring a touchdown. Five for fifty six on the ground. Damian Harris, fifteen for seventy one and one. Big week for Damian Harris. Of the Patriots. Got stuffed on the one on another drive, so he was, you know, opportunity is there for him. James Robinson. Who boy. I mean, last week it was almost a 50-50 split. This week, 63% of snaps. More routes run than Travis Etienne. Twice the touches of Travis Etienne. Had a huge touchdown run in this game. And looks just plain fine. I as mean, in healthy. Yeah, yo, yeah, he definitely looks healthy. I did not realize his full end of game utilization because he had his 37 yard touchdown run was it was a great run like he made some people miss and it didn't you're like oh well Robinson's not gonna make it. oh he made it. he's it was a it was a sensational play but to have a 37 yard run and you finish with your stat line of 23 carries for 64 yards I mean that that is that a red flag at all well, it's not a red flag because this team did exactly what they said they were going to do, which was going to be run the football no matter what happens over and over and over again because that's their pathway. And they had a huge lead, so you kind of knew what they were going to be doing on offense. So I kind of chalked that up to 
I'm happier he got 23 carries than mm -hmm. I am sad okay. he wasn't hyper efficient against the Colts because their plan was to waste the clock once they got a big lead. Right. Yeah, I, I I agree with that take, and he's getting more and more confidence as someone that you can start. You know, the double touchdown week one looked great. Like, oh, you could throw him in, but you utilization wise, you were still a little bit worried. Now, ugh, another touchdown, another great fantasy production. It's almost one of those. Do you do you trade him, or now have you switched to where it's like I have to have him? I think if you get somebody to believe that he's a top tier running back now, because maybe after one week you couldn't have that belief, then maybe you cash in because he is sharing time. But I don't know. He looks great and and foundational. McCaffrey, the utilization for McCaffrey is is weird, and yet he still throw him the ball. He's still the RB six on the week, despite you know disappointment. I think from a lot of people because it wasn't a prolific fantasy output. But like you said, the Running back scoring was way down on the week. He had 100 rushing yards, 15 he, rushing attempts, five targets. He's, he saved the day with a with a huge 50-yard carry. Uh, in the the targets are so frustrating. Because there's, Baker is not not looking to use the best player on that offense. And here is a uh, – here's my number one – here is my number one trade for target. David Montgomery, 15 for 122 last night has Houston and the Giants and Minnesota for the next three matchups. He was um, great. one of the best running backs uh, on the field yesterday uh, in terms of just how he looked and his opportunities. Could have scored, didn't, and I would be looking at grabbing him personally because he is the guy. Yeah, yeah he looks like he is the guy, uh, and he looked fantastic. My question for uh, that was uh, you go back – Dalvin Cook, week one against the Green Bay Packers, 20 for 90. So, I mean, that's a that's a very strong day. You had Montgomery, who had his big game of 15 for 122. And then the few amount of opportunities that Khalil Herbert actually got, he was four for 38 on the ground. Like, yeah. the Packers have a problem right now stopping the run. So, that, that looks, at least right now through two weeks, that looks like this, is, this could be uh, juicy when you get your running backs matched up. When you throw the ball eleven times, I know I know what you want to do. Uh, wide receivers, there were some lose. That's what you want to do when you throw the ball eleven oh, times. Oh yes, you want to lose. I thought you said the wide receivers lose. No, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. The targets were insane. Nineteen for Jalen Waddle, eleven for one seventy one and two. Thirteen for Tyreek Hill, eleven for one ninety and two. Uh, first teammates in NFL history with one hundred fifty plus for receiving yards and two touchdowns in the same game. It was one for the ages. They're both incredible starts moving forward on a team that you combine their talent with competent play calling and you end up in a situation like this that you dreamed of. And it won't be this good every week, like you said earlier with Tua, but it will be good often. Amon Ross St. Brown. Oh, man. I mean, oh, nine man. for 116 and two and then had two rushes for 68 yards. He is great. Uh, I mean... He's established himself. All the questions in the offseason of, well, Hawkinson was gone, Swift was gone, yeah. the the stretch of games, he was great, but, it, like, you know, it, it was just because he was necessary. He has come back out this season. You saw him on Hard Knocks being the dude. Then he comes into the season. He's the dude. He's who Jared Goff says he looks for. Dude to dude. And, I mean, it, you, don't, you can't. Their coach is the dude. You cannot do what he has done on the NFL field unless you are a great wide receiver. This stretch run has been good enough where I think all the questions are answered. If he comes out and has a bad game, two bad games, I'm ignoring yeah. him. Kyle, do you have anything to say about Amon Ra? He's definitely necessary. I agree. <laughs> That's the Kyle we know oh, and love. Man. Yes. Just, what are we, we're like quadrupled down now. I love it. No, I recommend him in DFS this week. I was all about it. Okay. Oh, yeah? My all start right. of the week? I'm going to Ross Sambra? Yeah, good call. Yeah, thanks. Did you play him in your DFS lineup? I did. No, no, I'm talking to Andy. Uh, I did not. Because I, I did. did. I know you did. I know. And we were, our matchup was very close. Was it three points apart? Something like that? Yeah. Jason, and you were pretty... Jameis Winston was a mistake <laughs> from the get-go. I knew it on the show. To... And, to to be fair, we didn't know that – like, we knew he was kind of a little bit banked up and what he's going to play. 
And then Sunday morning, they're like, uh, Jameis Winston has multiple breaks in his back? Yeah, we try what? not. We like, as the game is starting, basically. That was a problem. We oh, try sure. to not adjust our rosters from what we announce on the show, unless, obviously, if the player's not going to be active. But yeah. I would never have started Jameis Winston without Kamara and with four broken bones in the back. <laughs> on Sunday morning. No, you're you normally keep it to two broken bones or less. It's my limit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cooper Cup still, Ew, man, dominant. Fourteen targets, eleven for one hundred eight and two. You can't stop him. He's just Houdini. How many straight games with ninety plus receiving yards? A thousand. A thousand. Yeah, that is Thank great. you, Kyle. I think he's good. Good effort. NFL record currently. Let's talk about Garrett Wilson. <clears throat> Garrett Wilson had fourteen targets, eight for one hundred two and two. He is uh, at thirty two percent target per route run. And he is a difference maker. You watch it with your eyeballs, and you're like, you know, how do you adjust your view of Elijah Moore now with Garrett Dude. Wilson's emergence? Uh, so I, Shocking. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I think a lot of people are going to overreact on Elijah Moore negatively. Elijah Moore is still a great wide receiver. This doesn't just – I mean, look, you just saw uh, Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill have – Awesome games together. That's the abnormal thing, right? That that doesn't usually happen. Usually when one player is great, the other isn't. I don't think we should be taking things away from Elijah Moore as the possibility of having good games and, and, and being the number one. If you look at the, uh, the snaps. routes run, yeah, yeah. the snaps, he's he was the one. But him being good doesn't take anything away from Garrett Wilson. They have two really, really good wide receivers. And as of right this second, they have a quarterback that can actually throw him the ball. So... Would you have the courage, though, to play Elijah Moore? He's finished 52 and 60 at the position. I mean, the disparity of 14 to 5 in this past game would make me want to see him do it from the bench. Yeah, I, I think I would have the courage in, in, in certain situations. Obviously, it's always a matter of who else you have to start. But when you are getting the utilization of routes run and snaps as the wide receiver one, you, you put those players out there. I mean, wide receivers, we say this every year and have to remind people, it's so hard in week two – to realize how inconsistent wide receivers are. Like, great wide receivers are going to have six, seven, eight bad games over the course of the season. Like, you know, that that's normal. So if wide, week one and week two aren't great, you're like, oh, man, he's dead. That's that's not how it works for wide receivers. So I'm, I'm, I'm not moving on from uh, Elijah Moore. I'm not necessarily like, I mean, the Jets offense as a whole, I'm not forcing into my lineup. But they, they have a talented – cast here I mean you you look at Brees you're not Hall. forcing Garrett Wilson in I'm not forcing Garrett Wilson in. no I mean I'm happy to play him 14 targets with a monster game and he looks great mm -hmm. I mean this is this is this is fun I'm happy for Jets fans not only for the win but just for the outlook of you know for sure that you have talented skill position players on this team with Elijah Moore Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall Man, come on, Zach Wilson, Carter. be something. Oh, and Michael Carter absolutely looks amazing. Uh, Christian Kirk, dominant again. Jason started the week. Mike Williams, 10 targets. Drake London looks great. Yes, The rookies does. right now, yep. Olave, London, Wilson, uh, it's been impressive. And we'll see what Traylon Burks has tonight. Amari Cooper bounces back. Donovan Peoples-Jones had one target. Cooper had 10, nine mm -hmm. for one and one and one. Um, stabilizing the you know market correction on Amari Cooper. Mm -hmm. Yep, Jahan Dotson scored again. Curtis Samuel nine targets, seven for seventy eight and a touchdown. They have Philadelphia coming up next week. Curtis Samuel and Jahan Dotson in play for you. Yes. It's hard to say. Start all three Washington Commanders. <laughs> it is. Well, and, uh, what sucks is like you read two names, mm -hmm. <laughs> like and the uh, Kurt, or, uh, Terry McLaurin had a good week one, but like. He snuck in. I mean, it was like it was one really big play, which Terry McLaurin can do. Just saying, it's it's out it's outrageous here that Curtis Samuel to me, Curtis Samuel is the safest start of the Washington trio. They're all in play, but the fact that we're here with Samuel and Dotson and we're not talking about Terry McLaurin is is it breaks my heart. Rashad Bateman, seven targets, four for Bateman. one hundred eight and one. Took a slant to the hizzy. Yes, he did. Was absolutely uh, on display. Jason's proclamation of the disparity between Rashad Bateman and Devin Duvernay. Duvernay also got hurt, I believe. How many touchdowns did 
Rashad Bateman have in the special teams game, Jason? Oof. He had one fewer than Devin Duvernay. Yes. Gotcha. Which is what I was obviously talking about. Cortland Sutton, 11 targets, 7 for 122. Um, Feed him. Yeah, I uh, I think they were going to have to. Michael Thomas, nine, him. 9 targets, 6 for 65. Tight end studs this week, Mark Andrews and Darren Waller. <laughs> right, yeah. Moving on. That, that's it. But uh, one other wide receiver stud is Chris Olave. He doesn't show up in the box score. He didn't finish the final you know, fantasy finish as great. But the targets that went his way, yep. not only the total, uh, but the type, he had 320 air yards. That is the most outrageous number I've ever heard of ever um i don't know that it's the highest ever but i can't remember no ever. broken bones in his back to your knowledge right and so uh you know he's just off on a couple deep bombs he did catch one targets deep bomb that um he then fumbled on his way down which yes. was unfortunate but the utilization was there i think michael thomas and chris olave should be started um yeah yeah he he's looking very good uh, Mark Andrews, Darren Waller had the big weeks. Uh, starts of the week, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett were very playable. Six for 71, seven for 71. The Muth got into the end zone. He's the youth. Uh, he is, he's, look, in the landscape of tight ends. Seven the Muth, targets. The youth is pretty good. Uh, yes, give me seven targets, please. All right, on to the duds. Pooped in his big boy pants. I wish we could have talked about Allen Robinson in that last segment, who did score a second touchdown, but they inexplicably. Oh my good! The medical timeout. Did you see this, Jason? No, I, I missed that. So uh, they lined Allen. Rob he had already scored. They lined him up in the backfield like a running back, like a Debo, and then they ran him into the flats, threw him the ball wide open, Just touchdown, second touchdown, and the ref. Everybody played the play. Yes, the play was done. Offense and defense completely played the play. Nobody thought that there was a whistle because there wasn't, and then they call the playoff. And they say the medical spotter up in the in the booth yeah, saw somebody on the field that they thought had a concussion. You can't undo So they canceled plays. the play. What? And uh, Cooper Cup ends up with the touchdown. Yeah. So, anyways. Wow. Still Jeez. nice that he didn't completely uh, – he still got into the end zone. Yeah, but. Week, week one, your Mike Williams uh, and Allen Robinson were looking uh, – you were holding your breath. And yeah, now, I was packing a bag. I yeah. mean, I was. I had called the Uber to take me to the airport. And turns out football is not one week long. Thank goodness for that. Here are some duds. I want your concern levels. Ready? Russell Wilson, 14 for 31, one touchdown. Seven and a half. I'm, I'm very concerned. So 10 is 10 super is, worried. Yeah, 10 is full panic, red alarm. I He's, he's looked bad. Um, he, you know, decision-making... Uh, the offensive system. I, I I haven't really seen anything to make me sack town fall in love here, and these have not been the best defenses. I mean, maybe Seattle and Houston are better defenses than we you know thought going in. That these are not top five, top ten defenses. These are teams that are going to be picking near the top of the NFL draft next year, and they couldn't score. Like, yeah, there's nothing that like the gap between where they're at. And where we want them to be for fantasy is very, very large right now. I'm, I'll go six out of ten. If especially if Judy is out, then you may want to pivot for, away from Russell Wilson. I, I agree that Wilson has looked terrible, but personally, I blame so much of this on coaching. Like if you're the quarterback and you're not getting your plays called, like. You're not being able to set up the offense until there's like five seconds left on the clock almost every time you snap the ball. That creates a chaos in your offense. You're, no one is settled. No one's fully prepared for the, for the snap. And it's well, regardless of the out. fault, you can't expect it to be fixed in one week. No, but I'm saying I, I think that because it's the coaching to me that over the course of the season, they like the Denver Broncos coaching staff, the, this is a completely green staff. No one here has – coached in the role that they are currently in no i know benjamin albright came out and talked exactly. about that but that is that's the red alarm to move yes. on to me uh it's I, i'm saying i think it you can move on i don't have a problem moving on but over the course of the season i do think it will get better i so i would agree with both of those things i think i think it will be better later and i would move on i would look if i've got russell wilson on my fantasy roster i'm looking to start someone else next week joe burrow six sacks 
He led the NFL with 51 last year. He's on pace for 111 sacks. What happened to this massively improved offensive line? I mean, I was so excited for the Bengals this year for the, the run game and for Joe Burrow to just see, like, I, mean, I, I, I don't understand. They spent so much money, and this was supposed to be, like, the biggest upgrade they offensive line. They spent $74 million on their offensive line to upgrade it. And then they've... And they've should lost. have gone with crypto. Have they, they been <laughs> starting three offensive linemen just rotate like why? Well, and it's a little bit. I mean, you can't lay it all at the feet of the offensive line if Joe Burrow is holding on to the ball too long. Um, I'm sure there's some of that mixed in. If you lead the league in sacks last year, he's made some mistakes. Four interceptions in week one, six sacks in week two. You had T. Higgins back on the field, and you couldn't get it done against Dallas. But red alert here for the Cincinnati Bengals. And they're on the road against the Jets next week. Oh, man. And that game is good. What do you think that line, <laughs> Kyle, what do you think that line's going to be? On Cincinnati the minus one, two? Maybe. I'll go Cincinnati minus one and a half. Yeah, I, it's going to be something like that. Oh, man. I think it'll be three and a half. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. They, they've they looked terrible. They've looked – and they're – you know, you talk about the Super Bowl mm -hmm. hangover. Yeah. And, um, it's real. It's always real. The amount of grief that we receive for doubting Joe Burrow – could possibly not take over the NFL through two weeks. And, again, it's it's a long season. But what are you doing with him for fantasy? You spent more than you even spent on Russell Wilson in most leagues on Joe Burrow. I will play him against the Jets. There you go. Tom Brady, 18 for 34, one touchdown. New Orleans defense is stout. He didn't have weapons beyond Mike Evans for some of the game. But it hasn't looked great through two weeks. Yeah, and I mean, I, I chalk this up to the weapons issue. When when you don't have a healthy receiving core, you pretty much had Mike Evans for some, most of this game, three quarters of the game or whatever. Um, Brady, someone we said to look to start someone else over this last week. I will continue doing that until I know that they've got at least Julio and Mike Evans totally yeah. healthy and active out there. Green Bay next week doesn't look great. He was the 26th ranked quarterback in fantasy in week one, the 25th in re week two. So they finally come home against Green Bay, but it, based on Green Bay's, you know, rushing defense, you may see more Leonard Fournette. Good. I I do think there's a chance Godwin plays next week. But, that would be but very if he helpful. But it does, man. I mean, nervous. Yeah, sure. Very I'm nervous. Just saying, with with the way that they talked about the injury, the really late scratch for him to be inactive this week, it's, I think there's a chance. Hope. I, my hope as a fantasy player with Godwin on my bench is that they take another week and make sure he is completely healthy. But after this performance, Godwin might push himself onto the field. Breaking news. What? Josh Gordon is being elevated from the practice squad. <laughs> Oh, Josh man. Gordon. Is he on the Bucks? Josh Gordon. No. Oh. Josh Gordon is. You don't even know where he is. Nope. The no Tennessee idea. Titans are elevating Josh Gordon, and he is going to play tonight against oh, the Bills. Is Phillips out. So maybe, maybe. But uh, Josh Gordon time, baby. Here, here's the. What uh, could have been? Here's the quote from his agent. Josh needs opportunities to prove that he's still the incredible player and talent he has always been. I mean, yeah, you need opportunities to prove if you're good. That is a fact. And a more more important breaking news, James Conner, uh, the injury that kept him off the field is not considered long-term or serious. Okay. So stayed in uniform on the sideline during the game. Uh, Matt Ryan stinks. Yeah. He looked really bad week Whoa. one. Um, Michael Pittman was fine, but he looked bad. And now you take Michael Pittman away. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, they had two, two Matt Ryan to give – I mean, he looked terrible. I'm, but – they had no, they had no veteran pass catchers for this team. I mean, you was Paris Campbell, who's played what six games in his career, I believe so zero catches. Ashton, yeah, Paris Campbell on the field the most, zero catches. Ashton Doolin, and then your your tight end squad is like is Gigantor and <laughs> Kylan Grants and second year player, and I, I the offensive line let him down. So he looked bad. He looked like he was making poor decisions. But he was getting the crap beat out of No him. excuses. He's uh, done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you're a vet. Part of a champion. Literally, this is the nightmare that Frank Reich was walking into when Andrew Luck uh, decided yep. to retire. You go from Brissett to Rivers to Wentz to Ryan, retread country. And the problem with the retreads at that age is that if one thing goes wrong in the backfield, the play's over. They have no ability to do anything you know, 
it's just and the real problem with the retreads is they aren't bad enough to get you a great draft pick and a good quarterback for the future so you just keep looking for another retread the lack of using jonathan taylor was head scratching nine for 54 one target yeah one target for johnny taylor what are you doing uh so joe mixon tough week zeke tough week rashad penny red <laughs> alert six for 15 ken walker played he looked like he had some juice i know he didn't do much all you need to say is six carries zero yeah. targets yep. six carries that's yep. not someone you can start cordero patterson 10 for 41 one target the comments uh, out of – we can just wrap the Kyle Pitts discussion into this. Let's just sure. talk about Falcons offense. Bright spot, Drake London, 12 oh, yeah. targets. Everything else, what are you doing? Uh, Kyle Pitts, most highly drafted decoy I've ever seen. <laughs> Three targets. Patterson not getting targeted. Like, you, you say you're trying to win the game. That's what Arthur – Arthur – that's what Arthur oh, said. He was trying to win the ball game. He's, this isn't fantasy football. We're trying to win by not using our best plays. Listen to this. Week one for Kyle Pitts, 84% of snaps, 78% routes run. Week two, 93% of snaps, 91% routes run. Maybe so, we should design you know, plays. And they took a, they they took a the shot ball. down the sideline, right? And if Kyle Pitts catches their, that one bomb down the sideline instead of a pass interference, nobody's freaking out, but... The panic is real. I mean, the panic is 80-plus percent of people that took him are wondering, am I just going to lock this kind of, you know, cement block into my tight end spot? Tyler Higby's going out there and catching seven passes. Pat Fryermuth can get into the end zone. Kyle Pitts has now played 19 games and had one touchdown. Yeah, I mean, I, Fryermuth is drafted, so he's not on the waivers for Kyle Pitts managers. If you're a Kyle Pitts manager, he is pretty much locked into your lineup because I don't think there's anyone on waivers that is worth putting in ahead of him. So this is a – this is – man, you hope that the cement boots dissolve in the water and you could swim up because you're drowning right I mean, now. He's lining up as an outside wide receiver like all of the time but not getting targets. Yeah, and so then for Cordero Patterson, 10 carries for 41 yards. I believe Tyler Algier also the rookie – for the Falcons, also had 10 carries. Patterson only had one target. How worried are you on Patterson? I mean, they got boat raced. They were they were lucky to come back based off of special but teams one and target, turnovers. One target for yeah, a pass I mean, catcher. It's a problem. Okay. But they play they play Seattle next week. I think Patterson... <laughs> Breaking news. Yeah, take that. Go ahead. Uh, Mike Evans is suspended for a game. So um, Tom Brady should be on your bench. Yes. Or, you know, he's got nobody. Tom Brady should be apologizing to Mike Evans for I, starting fights. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I, uh, I, think if Chris Godwin is active, you might want to play him, which is scary. Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon did not have big games. Javante looked good, but again, yeah. this offense is just, they're puddling around in the field goal range at all times with no... You know, they struggle in the red zone when they do get there. They haven't been able to punch it in. It'll probably change over time, but San Francisco next week. Target market share for Javante with losing Jerry Judy means that brighter days ahead. It was disappointing. He had a couple of pretty bad drops in this game. That made me wonder if, like, yeah, are they going to give more opportunities yeah. to Gordon? Because Javante had a couple of really bad ones. Kareem Hunt just didn't get into the end zone. 13 for 58. Same old Kareem Hunt. Don't worry yep. about it. Yep. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Chase Edmonds, five carries, thirty-three yards, three targets, one catch. Mostert played more snaps. Mostert basically matched him in routes, doubled him up in carries. What's going on with Chase Edmonds? People were wondering after a quarter and a half whether yeah. he was even on the field. Because he was a goose at that point. Yeah, this this was uh, clearly game plan. They they came out and had Mostert as the lead back over Chase Edmonds, which was flipped from what we saw previously. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is in the range of outcomes: is that he can just be the backup in a in a game plan. Uh, the good news is that if he is the backup, he's the backup to one of the guys similar to Elijah Mitchell that you can't ever you know that can't stay healthy um 
but you you can't start Chase Edmonds right now, and I would I would certainly personally not drop him. I think that um you've you, we're two weeks in and we've seen two different uh, game plans. We need more information. Yeah, I'd hold him. But uh, yeah, he's not not startable right now. With and I I think that questions will be asked and we'll we'll get some quotes this week on why that game plan was you know uh, rolled out and see what see what happens from there. Yeah, San Francisco, you know, where where you're talking about the same system, they would morph their game plan week to week. They talked about getting Gesicki more involved. And he did. And he did. He caught four passes, had a touchdown. And he hit the worst gritty we've seen mm -hmm. of all time. He, Josh, he owned up to it. <laughs> I know. It was it was I'm glad he owned it cuz that was like he, he the gritty is is slow. It's swagger and he was <laughs> he's just running. <laughs> um the running gritty. Let's talk about uh, a few wide receivers here. Jamar Chase didn't yes. have a big game, whatever. Throw it out. Mike Evans suspended. Don't play him when he's suspended because he won't score for you. Yep. But he had a bad game because he got thrown out. Brandon Cooks, 10 targets, 4 for 54. I like the 10 targets. Darnell Mooney, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, Darnell Mooney. Zip. You got to move it. on. You got to move on. I don't want to clog my roster with one for negative four pieces of a passing game that is averaging 14 attempts a game. The Seattle offense looked pretty bad. Six targets for DK Metcalf. Dude, what do you do? Four for 35 for DK Metcalf. What was, what was he week one? Pull up that line. He was seven for 35 Seven or for 36. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, he made a great catch in this game because he had Man. to because of Geno Smith. Um, Metcalf is a flex with your eyes closed at this point. Okay. Russell Gage, six targets, five for 28. He could become Mr. Necessary next week. If Godwin's off the field, you know, Brady will have to throw the football to somebody. Yes, he will. So, uh, you know, and then Hunter Renfro, double fumble, five, seven for 59. His involvement was more encouraging, to be honest. And then all of the Kansas City wide receivers. Yeah. Can we get the, um, the goose crew going? DJ Chark, <laughs> Paris Campbell, the awful tower, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Devontae Parker, farewell. And uh, Kenny Galladay. Dude, did you see the snaps? Yeah, two, right? I think so. He played. That's not like. Yes, two total snaps on Sunday. Two snaps. Not Kenny gone away. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. And and really did. You heard he cleaned out his locker. What? Oh, yeah, did he? They, yeah. This is this. Oh, is really? So, oh, is it over? It's uh, juicy. It can't be over. He's paid so much money. Like. <laughs> is this what was playing in the locker room? Mm -hmm. For the undefeated Giants. What was the what was the who's the leading pass catcher for the Giants? Has to be Sterling Shepard. Uh, Richie James. Really? <laughs> yeah. So what a magician Brian Dable is. Wandale Robinson was hurt. Yes. Yeah. The game. He might be worth a stash. Like this is a deeper league. I'm not I'm not proclaiming Roberts is going to be the man, but he's like the only chosen one by this offense, and everyone else is just put in the doghouse. <laughs> sometimes they play, Al, sometimes they Al don't. Al Borland has a nice mental picture here. What would you say? I said I was just picturing Kenny Galladay pulling his sax case out of his locker and sadly <laughs> walking out of the room. <laughs> the sad musician? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. You don't got what it takes anymore. No one's putting dollars in the little tip jar. Oh, no. Um, I, I, I actually think Sterling Shepard is uh, – we'll talk about waiver wire pickups yeah. tomorrow. But um, 10 targets, had a good week one, has history. Ach Achilles won players two. Yeah, players winning this year. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, seven targets, three catches. It just, he is what Turd. it is. Turd. <laughs> Turd alert. <laughs> I mean, wow, that's, that's it's bitterness is there. The bitterness. A, that's a man who has Hawkinson <laughs> on the roster. Oh, exactly what it is. Droppinson. Oh, man. I mean, TJ Hawkinson, you like to see the seven targets, but worthless. And and he is. Third alert. I mean, oh, man, just you're what not a, happy. Wow, wow you've no, been sitting on I, that one. I, I know. I just saw <laughs> so, the name and felt the, felt felt the, the rage. Turd that some, sometimes you feel a turd and needs to get out. And so you got to. Are you oh, looking for new solutions? Hundred percent. You can't. I mean, I. I feel what like, are they? <laughs> yes, someone. Thank you. You always oh, want to get rid of a turd the right way. Um, yeah, I mean, I. I it's the same for <laughs> Kyle Pitts, for Hawkinson. People, you know, managers who have them as your tight end. You, you need to be 
looking for answers. Like Juwan tires. Johnson? Are you going to kick the tires say, is, on is Juwan? The, is, the, uh, is the answer uh, Taysom Hill? The answer With is... With his three carries for 14 yards? Mike was really having a good huh? time today. Twitter? Math! Eat it! <laughs> Math, he says. Yeah, oh, Juwan, how did our how did our bet turn out? Juwan Jennings versus Taysom Hill. Was this a week? Juwan Johnson, what? yeah. yeah. Do you, you know his name? Um... Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care about him. The, pro, the point is, I taste he, he only cares about the hill. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, I you got to look somewhere, and maybe that <laughs> is, um, is it, maybe it's George Kittle, maybe, maybe it's Zach Ertz, it's Zach Ertz. You know, try to try to try to find someone. I you can't sit on Hawkinson. <laughs> it's brutal, man. The tight ends again. Here we are again. Here, this just, is why the, just expect nothing. And you won't. You can't be disappointed. This is why on the things to remember episode from last year, it was it, it was this. It was remember how bad tight ends are. You either draft one of the first guys, which is fine, or don't draft another one until the the draft is over, which is basically you know that's like. You Can know. I tell you what I do? Yeah. If I had T.J. Hawkinson, oh please, I would play him. Well, I mean, I am playing. No, him. I mean, I would moving forward. I don't think you can find a better option. I, I think Kyle Pitts and T.J. Hawkinson have to stay in your lineup based on usage. That's. I mean, I. I what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to roll the dice and hope you win a, a Johnny Smith a lottery? No, I. They're in my lineup. You've got to go get someone that is. You've got to go try to get a Pat Fryermuth or uh, the, the name I wrote down because I. I mean, I, you know, I I was thinking about this on the show. Is I'm going to try to go trade for George Kittle. He's injured. He's got Jimmy Garoppolo. We haven't seen anything yet. Sure. And if you can grab Kittle. Then there's at least hope. Like right now, I have none. And by Kittle, <laughs> no hope in my heart. You can get Ross Dwelly. Sure, oh, peanut butter Dwelly time. Peanut butter Dwelly time. <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for today's show. We're going to be back with that ever important waiver show tomorrow, along with streaming quarterbacks, which you're going to need after some of these dud performances to move on from Brady and company. Join us tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.